when any Christian, when any person that is seeking the true divine God, when they look around what is happening in the world and around them, they keep on wondering what is going on. There is something mysterious. I can see evil is being infiltrated everywhere. I can see evil is being so rapidly increasing at a global pace, at a global level, so fast. I'm not catching up with the, with the new changes that are happening in an evil way. I'm not catching up. I need to be updated every second nowadays. I see people walking away from God more and more. Atheism infiltrated the world. So many countries, once upon a time, they were built on Christian values. Nowadays, they are in total denial of their own Messiah. Europe, Canada, America, Australia, the Western world more so, who were Christians, friends. My goodness. I was going to mention another country, but I'll, I'll keep my peace. <laughs> What is happening? So when I wonder and I look around and I see all this evil happening, then as a believer in the true divine God, the question arises within me, God, where are you? Can you explain please? To me, this is a mystery. How come you're not doing anything? How come you are not stopping all this evil yet you are so capable of achieving such a thing you can stop it before I blink my eyes yet you're letting go and this is exactly not just us as lay people as simple people as weak people even the prophets of the Old Testament question this mystery I'm gonna give you a biblical reference from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Jeremiah 12, 1 to 2, he is asking exactly the same question. There's something mysterious happening around me, I, Jeremiah, in relation to God. Look at this, Jeremiah 12, 1 to 2. Righteous are you, O Lord. He is actually engaging in a dialect with God himself. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Meaning, you are too good to be true. Who am I to question your wisdom, your authority, your sovereignty? Who am I? But at the end, at the same time, don't be angry with me, God, when I'm questioning, where are you? <laughs> because evil is surrounding me, Lord. What are you waiting for? Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet let me talk. Look at this. Please forgive me first, but please let me talk and don't be offended or angry with me. Yet let me talk with you about your judgments. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? I'm asking you, Lord. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? Those who do evil, how come they are happy? And those who are trying to do good, how come they are so miserable? You have planted them. You've planted them. Those who do evil, you planted them. They are, you created them. They are yours. Can you stop them? You have planted them. Yes, they have taken root. They grow. Yes, they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. You're so close to them, but so distant from them in their mind. Because their mind is thinking evil and you are the good God. But I, Jeremiah, the prophet of the Lord, I'm asking, why do people who do bad prosper and those who are trying their hardest to do good they keep on falling, falling, falling. And the people who are seeking God are becoming less and less. And those who are seeking Satan are increasing so rapidly every single day.
Where are you God? How come God is keeping silent and allowing evil to increase so quickly and so fast? Why isn't he interfering and stopping it? It's a mystery. You know why? One reason God is not interfering so fast because of his beloved bride, the church. I'll give you a simple analogy. Imagine there is this king in this particular country and in that particular country where he reigns over as a king has a person that he loves he's got a bride he's got a girl that he loves and adores the most and he is betrothed to this girl and he wants to marry her later on this girl is living in that very country where he resides there as a king the people of that country are evil doers they're doing everything that is offensive to the king and against his sovereign authority. If it was up to him, he would have wiped that country from the face of this earth because of the evilness of those people in that country. The only thing that is stopping him from wiping that country is his sweetheart. For as long as she is living in that country, he can't burn it. Because if he burns it, he's going to kill the love of his life. He's waiting for the day he takes her home. And the day that comes, he takes her home. You can kiss goodbye this world. This king is Christ. The bride is the church. And the church is living in this world. He put it in this world. And he was betrothed to the church while she's in this world but the people of the world are doing everything evil in the sight of this king and he's so angry and he's about to strike this world and wipe it from existence but the only thing that is not interfering so quickly where we started questioning God where are you because he's saying the only reason I'm so patient with this evil world because I have the love of my life still in the world. I cannot strike it because how can I strike it and kill the one I died for? Didn't I die for the church on the cross? I am waiting for the day to take my bride home. Believe you me, when that day comes, <laughs> the world will know how awesome Jesus Christ of Nazareth is.